In his letter to the church at Rome, we know it as the book of Romans in the New Testament, Paul writes about what it means to be a member of the body of Christ, the church. And he talks about us as individuals. And he tells us that we each have gifts and talents that the Holy Spirit has given us. And he admonishes us to not think too highly of ourselves because we are to present ourselves and our entire lives as an offering to God. Here's the rub. Most of us don't have a problem with thinking too highly of ourselves. We all know people who are arrogant and who do think too highly of themselves. But for most of us, we have the opposite problem. We don't think highly enough of ourselves. And that's the problem I want to address this morning. You see, I like to picture a staircase with a flight of stairs going up and there's a landing and then a second flight of stairs coming off the landing. God has created us to be on that landing. We're neither too high nor too low. And we think of, of arrogance and pride as sinful and we, we easily understand that those people take themselves off the landing and move themselves up the staircase a little higher than they're supposed to be. But what we don't realize is that just as sinful and just as, as probably even more problematic is the fact that the bulk of us move ourselves down the staircase. We see ourselves not as God sees us. How many of us feel comfortable with a compliment? When somebody compliments something we've done, we tend to brush it aside. We, we don't know how to accept that kind of accolade. We just, we're uncomfortable. And that's because we see ourselves in negative light. When I was in Al-Anon, um, Al-Anon works the same 12 steps as AA or NA. And the fourth step is to take a fearless moral inventory of yourself. And I put that step off forever. Because I already knew in my mind my shortcomings. I already beat myself up over all the things I should have done and didn't do and things I shouldn't have done and I did do. So the last thing I wanted to do was write them down on paper and see them in their full, all of them, at one time. And then that fifth step is to take that list and share it with someone else. No. And I struggled with that until my sponsor said, no, no, you don't understand. The step is to give you a moral inventory of your complete self. So you need to list your gifts, your talents, your strengths. And when I did that, it was, it was such a freeing thing. One of the reasons I'm Lutheran, and there are many, um, but I love the fact that we start every worship service, every Sunday morning, with the confession. Together, we all recite this confession that basically says, God, I screwed up. I'm sorry. And, and we voice the fact that throughout this past week, there were things that we should have done that we left undone, things we shouldn't have done that we went ahead and did, Things we should have said that we left unsaid. Things we shouldn't have said that we went ahead and said. And all those thoughts that, well, nobody else around us knows, God knows what they were. And I love the fact that I walk into church on Sunday mornings, reflecting over the week, feeling bad about how much I screwed up Monday through Saturday. And then I have this chance to just lay it out. And here at the same time, my brothers and sisters in Christ laying it out as well, knowing that I'm not alone. And then I get to hear the words of absolution, to hear that God has forgiven me, 
that he's not holding a grudge, that the slate is wiped clean, and I can now go back out and start all over again and screw up new this week. And you know I will, somewhere, somehow. You see, by putting ourselves down, by being stuck with low self-esteem, we are not giving God the glory that God deserves. Think of the majestic mountains, the beautiful flower-filled valleys and prairies, the lakes, the oceans, the rivers. Think of the magnificent creatures, the soaring eagle, the majestic lion, the same God who brought all of that into fruition, created you. You are the only you. God created you. And God doesn't make junk. You are a magnificent creature that God has gifted with gifts and talents and calls you to use them for the sake of your friends, your family, and the world. But we can't do that unless we recognize and embrace the beauty of ourselves. Yes, we screw up. Yes, we are sinful creatures. And we will be until the day we die. But that is no reason to not accept God's forgiveness, absolution, and to just keep trying. If you don't know what your spiritual gifts are, there are online tests that you can take. Find out what your gifts are. And some of them are obvious. If you can sing and people not want to leave the room, you have a gift that I don't. I can clear a room by singing. I tell my congregation that I will not sing and lead the service by singing because I love them and I'm not going to subject, subject them to that kind of pain. Whatever your gifts are, you have been created to use them for the good of the world around you. You are a magnificent creature. So stop thinking so lowly of yourself. Try doing an inventory. Try writing down the things you're good at the things people compliment you on. Seeing them in writing is, is phenomenal. Ask people around you what they see that you're good at. This is the week to embrace the inner journey to find out who you are, who God created you to be, and to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is calling you to use those gifts and this world right now needs you and your gifts more than it ever has. So go, fly, soar like the eagle you were created to be. Amen.